you know, one of the things that is pretty unique and about your show and your approach is it's this two part thing where you engage people in a storytelling component where they're just basically telling their story. And then a second part where you're, and I love this. I mean, you're engaging, right? You're, you're, you're doing what I guess I, I wanted to, to hear and what I was advocating before is you're engaging them and poking them and not in a confrontational way, but just in a way of saying, hey, how does this really relate? You're engaging them in the process that they went through. You're not leaving it at story, you know, because I think we do that too much. We, 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 we so want to say your experience, your experience. And part of that is a very appropriate response to this biological robot meaningless universe thing that says you have no experience. Oh, that's not even real. You know, really, when we get down to it, you don't really have an experience. So we need to celebrate the fact that we do have experience. But then I like where you're at, which is coming around it at the, at the end and saying, okay, let's dive in and let's put a whole process, which you do in the weeks beyond the, the story, in terms of deconstructing that story and what the lessons are and how we move forward from it. So can you talk to all of that and what you're trying to do and how you see that going? Yeah, it really follows a lot of the things that I, I believe and inform my work. I've tried to translate into media. And so we start with the story because I want people to feel what that person went through. But it's but nobody will deny someone's experience, right? Like if someone has a near-death experience and you hear the story and it's a compelling story, you're not going to say, well, that didn't happen. You're just going to say, you know, if you're skeptical or you're a materialist, you might say, well, I'm going to try to explain how this happened, but you might still engage with the story. And by doing that, what we're, we're doing is we're disarming people from, from immediately rejecting the content outright. We're bringing them on a journey. We're having them feel what it feels like by identifying with the character and the story. He was a real person and, and going on that journey. So, so in, in, in a sense, the story enables the initial transformation through emotion the follow-up interview is to, to then inform some of the the process some of the how some of the the details that went there some of the um the more tangible stuff uh so that people can then not only feel it but then have something to walk away with and then of course every week thereafter we send follow-up content and we're always deconstructing over the course of the month because we want to keep that process going keep to, keep expanding those those um those avenues and opening people up. So, so we're really, it's, it is very thought out. Is it going to work? I don't know. It's still too early. Um, it'll probably look different in the future, but that's kind of the goal is how do we use media in a way that can help somebody actually go on a transformative experience? How can they, how can I get somebody in an episode and over a course of a month to go from skeptical episode one to skeptical, skeptical episode 400 and feel okay about that. Um, and so some of those topics, I want to be getting into are some of these bigger topics, uh, uh, you know, things like near death experience, mediumship, uh, um, you know, the uh, reincarnation stuff like these, some of these things that I, I find are really fascinating philosophy, Bernardo Castro's work. Like I want to bring that into an environment where we can deconstruct it through a story. So people have reference, they won't deny it. They won't say this is not true. They can make their determination about it, but I'm trying to kind of find that way of helping them take a step forward without it being, an immediate rejection that this is BS or, you know, is, is just not possible. That's awesome. It really is. And it shines through just brilliantly in the first two episodes, which are terrific. And I really encourage people to check out Transcend Experience. It's pretty easy to find. You'll find it in the show notes. So Jeff, in the time that we have left and, you know, tell us more about, you, you did kind of tee up where you're going with this. Tell us how it's going so far. You said it kind of has gotten off to a really good start, which is great news. So how is it going? <laughs> it's, it's a process. I mean, I'm treating this like, uh, like a startup company in the sense of how I'm approaching it. So it's a lot of learning, a lot of failing as quickly as I can. And, and that means that there's some tough days working on it. But every day at the end, I walk away grateful that I get to do this. And it's something I'm really proud of and excited about. Um, 
And it's something I'm happy to talk about when someone asks me, what do you do? I actually have something I can share now that, uh, that feels good. And, uh, and, and my wife won't get mad at me for being creepy. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know where it's going to go. You know, what is it going to look like in 10 years? I don't know, but I have a 10 year time horizon. I'm not going to let up on this project. I think it's worthwhile. And, um, I think there's some really exciting opportunities to explore people's experience, but do it in a way that takes that next step. And, um, uh, and so I'll keep chugging along and, being right there and, and having my own transformation through the process and continuing to, you know, be curious about that question of what does it mean to transcend and we'll see where it goes. Awesome, Jeff. Thanks for being here on Skeptico. Thanks, Alex.